So recently, I had the honor of interviewing Mela Lee, a voice actress that's been in a slew of anime and video games as an English voice actress. You may know her as Kanata Ubiashiki in Demon Slayer, Lifeline in Apex Legends, Jade in Mortal Kombat 11, or Tiki from Fire Emblem Engage. Yet rather than talk to Mela about her popular roles, I wanted to interview her on one of her more niche roles. And one of my favorites from her, a role of hers that doesn't get talked about often. I'm talking about her voice acting as Sharon Kruger from the niche yet great JRPG series, The Legend of Heroes. So I sat down with Mela about her experiences as Sharon at SAC Anime, about all things Sharon. As a heads up, since Mela was in high demand during this con and quite busy, we had to do this interview at our booth in public. So the background noise may be a bit loud. So with that all being said, Let's get on to the interview. So we're here with Mela Lee, a voice actress that's been in a lot of video games and animes. My personal favorite, The Trails of Cold Steel, The Legend of Heroes. Got a Sharon Stan here. Oh, Sharon Stan, I am definitely a Sharon Stan. So are you ready, Mela? Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Okay. Question. I'm assassin level ready. Whoa, whoa. Speaking of Sharon. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> what moment in your life made you realize that voice acting was your calling? Ooh. You know, I was really fortunate to um, get several anime roles before I knew I was going to do this full time. I thought it was a great way to pay off my student loans, and I was going to go to law school. Um, but in 2014, I was in a really tough car accident. Somebody ran a red light texting, so please don't do that. Um, I fractured my back, tore a lot of muscles, but like, I woke up at Cedar sinai the Hunt Spine Center, uh, and all these uh, spinal specialists um, were looking, and then all of a sudden I had Steve Bloom, uh, Yuri Lowenthal, Tara Platt, Jason Charles Miller, the crew at Bang Zoom, my cup of tea, um, and, and my PCB peeps, sure that I had sessions that were handicap accessible and I thought I don't think I need to go to law school. <laughs> I'm living my dream life and I I don't know why I thought it wasn't possible. I was my own glass ceiling and I decided to put my whole heart into it and after that has come more trails. Uh, Princess Xanda in Black Panther's Quest. Uh, Jade, Mortal Kombat, Lifeline, Apex, Legends, um, Laramil, and Elder Scrolls, and uh, some Demon Slayer, some good Demon enemies Slayer? in there too. Yeah. So uh, I just knew, not just from the job, but from the friends, um, I, I think you, you pick up that the voiceover community is very different, and it's so supportive and kind and loving and filled with inspirational, intelligent, exquisite humans. This is where I want to spend the rest of my life. Wow, that's so thoughtful. <laughs> you, you went in deep. Like, well, first question. All right, <laughs> question two. So how do you, your friends and family react when you tell them that you voice act professionally? Um, in the beginning, it was like saying you're a professional dodgeball player. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but now I'm the cool auntie. So I get phone calls on a regular basis. Quick, quick, quick. I'm at this party. Can you do this voice? And so either Lifeline or Tiki from Fire Emblem or Sharon. And, um, I, got, I, got some, I got some fam cred now. You got some fam cred? I got some fam cred. I have a quick question to slide in there with, mm -hmm. your, with your fam cred, right? Or just yeah, yeah. voice in general. Are, are you allowed to do that? Like to actually like voice like um, I mean lines? on voicemails and, and yeah, talking oh. to the family. Yes, of course. They're not selling it. <laughs> okay, okay. I was wondering because like, I was like, wait a minute, that's so cool, right? Uh, okay. You're not like a swap meet selling like voice <laughs> notes. No, I got some Mila Lee. She said like she likes math. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, what did you expect when you tried out for the role of Sharon Cooper in Trails of Book Steel? Well, um, it was being produced by a dear friend, um, and I love this production company that's, that's doing it. And uh, I think I hoped my my hope was just to work with that company. a little bit more of an organic experience. Um, but it was really beautiful to 
the sea trails uh, expand and to work with the developers. They were all in, in the booth and, and sometimes on ISDN patch or Source Connect, so they're you know in another country, but all chiming in. And it's very much a collaborative effort. But what was I expecting? Mm. I was crossing my fingers that I'd get another dream job because they all feel like dream jobs. Mm. Honestly. You mentioned PCB, right? So I believe um, Valerie, I believe she does yeah. um, one of the voices for uh, Trails of Cold Steel. She I think um, uh, Aurelia Le Guin, right? Like one of the, the strongest swordswomen in, in Erebonia. I know, I know it's like really geeking out, right? But she's a really powerful character, right? Valerie, if you're watching. Yeah, yeah. Another stand, yeah, right? Hey, another stand. Hey, she's, you know, right. Question four. Okay. Um, did the voice director, I guess Valerie in this case, mm-hmm. did she give you creative liberties in saying what you want to say? Or was it by the do an incredible job, um, and, and not just a straight translation, but uh, kind of the spirit of the words, and uh, so we very much stay on the script, but Valerie, because she's an actress as well, she's very good at getting good performances out of us, she's kind um, and clear and concise, and so she's like a well, like the machine that PCB really works. Yeah. Okay, um, so following up on that, did you record Sharon's role? Actors or actresses? No, we actually uh, we record, which is most common for games. Um, the only game I've recorded with other people at the same time is Apex Legends because we have our cinematics, they're pretty heavy. Um, but most of the time you're alone, and that's why it's a director's medium, uh, especially for, for 2D games and, and that type of, you know, for Japanese games and our, and our, our Korean games that come over. Um, we don't see the big picture. So someone like Valerie has already heard the other performances or knows what she's wanting, and that's how she guides us to have an organic experience with our interactions. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, how often do you get asked about your role in Trails of Cold Steel with Sharon, as opposed to your other works? I think Sharon's a, a good 12%. 12%? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, and whenever I have prints for Sharon, especially in her assassin costume, I mean, she looks lovely as a maid, but in her true form, uh, she's pretty fierce. She's awesome. Um, I think, but that's the beauty of it. Um, there are, just like an actor on film would maybe have a larger Marvel franchise, but have like a niche indie movie that they're really proud of. It's the same thing with Trails. Uh, there's a very specific fan base, and it's always lovely to connect with them, um, because every fan base has kind of a personality. The trails, the trails fan base is a lot like you. Yeah, hey. Intelligent, <laughs> smart, funny. You're selling me way too much, about, <laughs> but I appreciate it. I appreciate it. The last question is: When you voice Sharon, does Valerie, the voice director, uh, mm-hmm. give you any context of the conversation? Yes. Oh, she does. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and and we get we get our scripts usually on um, like an Excel spreadsheet, and so it'll have. Um, vessel and your director is sharing you, they're describing the experience, this is where you are, these are the colors that you see and your seven year old self instantly goes to imagination and then you just become and you do three takes, sometimes just two and they pick their favorite and then um, you're looking at the screen and as soon as the cursor goes to the next line you know they found something they loved nice, nice. and then you, you, you do three again and there's a rhythm though um, a lot of times you kind of get the idea of the scene and instead of stopping at every line, you, once you kind of know what's going on, you give them three, they pick, you give them three, they're like moving on. And so you end up doing six, seven hundred lines in a session. Yeah, you're yeah. Must hurt. <laughs> but, and it's water, um, but it's definitely, it's beautiful because your your actor side and your and your geek side, yeah. it's like you're all having a celebration at the same time. Oh, they're my favorite yeah. sessions. That's right, your actor and a geek. That's a perfect combo. <laughs> So much, Mela. Um, I, I don't do the handshake. I do the high five. High five. Cool. 
check her out. Check her out on Spotify, yeah. YouTube. Um, check out her merch. Her yeah. many works. Oh. Yeah, very recommended. So great. Once again, I want to thank Mela for taking the time to interview us during a busy con. It was great to interview her on Sharon Kruger, one of her more niche roles, and to have this in-depth interview out there for Legend of Heroes fans, as well as Sharon fans, to consume. Lastly, here's Mela's socials once again. If you want to learn more about her or stay up to date with what she's doing in anime, video games, and music. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.